All right, thank you. <clears throat> so it, it seems as though many of the really exciting objectivist solutions to world problems that you've, you've put out there on your shows in the past uh, would require um, really a, a radical reform, reformation. I, I think someone once called it a free market revolution. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so for example, you, you've discussed the idea uh, that if roads were privatized, then um, uh, the, the road owners would have an incentive to enforce rules of the road. Yep. Yep. And you, you discussed the idea that if, if healthcare were uh, deregulated, then innovations such as um, healthcare for life, once you're born, uh, uh, those types of policies would emerge. And, um, but things like you know, large amounts of privatized roads and really just a deregulated healthcare system um, just seem highly unlikely. So does that, does that mean that objectivist answers to problems uh, in many cases will likely always be only theoretical? Well, no, because I don't think it's highly unlikely. That is highly unlikely in our lifetime maybe, but I don't think they're highly unlikely in the future. I think reality and truth and justice and what, what works and what's moral actually win out in the end. And it might take, 30 years, it might take 50 years, it probably will take 100 years or longer, but I do think roads will be privatized one day and healthcare will be completely privatized one day. Um, so I, I, I do believe that that world will come about. Now, does that mean we have no, you know, nothing to, um, to contribute to the debate today? In a sense, it does mean that we have nothing to contribute. If, if the argument is between statists, how much to regulate product X, I don't have much to contribute to that. And I, haven't much, I don't have much influence on that debate. But if what we're trying to aim for is changing the minds of people in terms of how they live and in terms of their values and in terms of the way they approach the world so that they can become as individuals better off and that one day there'll be enough of those individuals to have a political impact, then I, have, I think we have a lot to contribute. That is, I think what we really have to contribute is to the lives of individuals. We have little to contribute to the actual solutions politically that are realistic today. And we have a lot of to contribute to the lives of individuals, but we do that partially by offering these radical solutions to the problems of the day and stimulating people into thinking about these issues and hopefully getting them, therefore, to read Ayn Rand and to take the ethics and to take the other ideas seriously and to change their own lives in terms of how they live their lives. So, you know, if Donald Trump called me tomorrow and said, Yuan, you know, what should I do? Well, beyond telling him to resign, um, there's no practical immediate <laughs> advice I have in terms of what to do, right? Yeah, deregulate more, you know, uh, uh, you know everything, you, you, everything move towards economic liberty. But in that sense, I wouldn't sound that much different than a, you know, certain economic conservatives or certain economic libertarians. Um, in terms of my radical solutions, I mean, nobody wants them. Nobody, no, they're not in play. They're not on the table. They're not options from which to select, right? So in that sense, you're right. They're not going to happen. Not, not anytime soon anyway. Okay. That answer, answer the question? It does. It's helpful. Thank you. Jennifer?